You ever have that one project that just fights you every step of the way? I'm going to show you one of mine, so don't go away. Hello everyone and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today we're going to be doing one of those projects that literally tried to break my spirit. In the end I did beat it down and I'm happy to share this with you. The Matchbox Race Car Transporter Build. The Transporter was built between 1965 and 1969 and is a very unusual casting featuring huge glass roof panels, storage in the back for two race cars, and this one is being built for my friend Ken. Well, here it is. Ken actually liked this black kind of spy looking finish and asked if I could do the truck in this kind of a dark government looking type vehicle so sure why not let's uh get going here the truck is held together with two very small rivets under the front bumper and a tab in the rear so be really careful when drilling this one out but once drilled out the truck actually comes apart relatively easily with in this case, the exception of the glass. It was locked in place by the massive amounts of black kid paint. I enlisted the help of my small flathead screwdriver and I got the base off the body. This was far and away the biggest die cast I've tackled and it had plenty of parts to vex me. The base of course had the two axles, the interior it had a drop-down ramp for loading a car on the top deck, had the body, and it also had a ramp door in the rear, and of course the stuck-in glass. Hell, even the interior had some kind of paint on it. There was literally no part of this truck that didn't have kid paint on it. But you know me, I love a challenge. With the help of my X-Acto knife and a small screwdriver, I finally got the glass out without breaking it. And with my fingers crossed, I dropped it into a vat of Super Clean to see if I could get this thick paint off and salvage the glass. Honestly, I, I had my doubts, so as a backup, I ordered a replacement part. Honestly, for all the cars I've restored, I've never seen a glass piece in worse shape. This is probably dead. With my rotary tool, I ground off the ends of both axles and the pin that held the upper deck in place. Finally, this thing is apart, but it sure didn't go easily into that good night. Because this casting was so big, I had to brush on the citrus strip rather than just drop it in. This took several attempts, and in fact, the paint on the base just it wasn't coming off. So I ended up dunking one end in the jar, letting it sit, clean it off, and then repeat. Finally, I did get the paint off, and I could start getting serious here. As a side note, 
Pay close attention to all of the stripping and the painting. Commit it to memory. When I have to do all of this over again, I'm not going to show you the footage again. I'm just going to have you turn to your memory. I'm going to invoke your thoughts that you're having right now because indeed I will be doing all of this over again. So while I do some cleanup with my brass bristle brush and my pick, let's go ahead and talk about the plan. In keeping with Ken's spy slash government uh, idea, my first attempt was going to be with a semi-gloss paint. I'll eventually land on flat black, which I end up thinking is a better choice. But that's going to be the plan, a very dark and sedate looking finish. When you're working on a casting this big, there are lots of nooks and crannies where little bits of paint can hide, and this was no exception. It was a lot of work to get it cleaned up, uh, but finally I got to where I was happy, and I just wanted to kind of go over it one final time using a wire wheel and my rotary tool. Here you can actually see what I was talking about with the base. It's actually time for a flip, and so you can see what I ended up having to do. I don't know why, but this aluminum paint just would not come off. Normally, the interior like this wouldn't be that big of an issue, but this casting has that giant glass roof. And so you're going to be able to see all of this, and it has to look good. Okay, so I guess we can check in on the glass. Nothing else has been going right. Maybe this will. It's been in the super clean for like two weeks. I opened the vat up. I'm going to fish this glass out and sadly find that the glass looks just totally unfazed. I've already had my share of issues with this build, so I, I really am done like dinner. Uh, this glass is just going right into the bin and I'm going to use the reproduction piece. Hey Ken, have I mentioned recently how much I hate you? If not, let me say that right now. I hate you. Okay, so at this point I actually foolishly think I'm making some progress. So I head over to the paint booth to coat everything with some Tamiya Fine Primer. Yes, Tamiya Fine Primer is pricey, but in my book it's worth every penny. It comes out so smooth and beautiful. I, I just love the stuff and can't resist using it. Once everything is dry from the primer, I painted the bottom side of the base black and then I built a mask from some cardboard and some tape so that I could paint the top of the base the aluminum color. I also had to do the same thing for the rear door. I'm finally giving the body its black paint job and then when I'm done, I can go ahead and set it to dry and actually, for a brief moment, bask in the short-lived glory of the moment because my next move is going to prove to be disastrous. After the paint was dry, I hit the whole thing up with some testers, satin clear, and damn it if the clear didn't go white on me. I was so pissed. 
After it dried, I tried to sand the body with a 2000 grit sanding sponge, but that was useless. The white wasn't coming off, but all the highlights, the, the paint was coming right off the highlights. So all I could do was eat this giant dookie sandwich and head back to the stripper. As I brush the stripper on this body, tears streaming down my face, I contemplate the many bad choices I've made in my life. Seriously, stuff happens. All you can do is figure out how to fix it and forge ahead. So that's what I'm going to do. So here I am all the way back at the paint booth. I've got a fresh coat of primer on it and I have a chance to rethink my paint choices. I decided that flat paint will probably work out better, especially in light of the trim idea that I have come up with. So here I am, I'm laying down Tamiya XF1 flat black paint and I'm actually praying at this point I don't screw up again. This is looking so much better. I am, I'm pretty happy right now. So, I'll put this paint job aside. I'm finally happy. I've got it sitting in the wings drying so I can move forward. And I take out the reproduction glass. It's nice, well done, but being as big as it is, nice wasn't gonna cut it. It needed to be stunning. So it was going to need some polishing. I took out my trusty Flitz polish and I got to shining up this glass and it really did come out great, but that's not good enough for me either. I've got another trick up my sleeve and I will tell you this, it isn't gauzy. This glass, like everything else in this casting, is just so big, I can't dunk it in the gauzy. So, instead I'm going to turn to an old standby, Pledge Floor Care. With the Pledge, it's cheap, it's abundant, and I can actually just simply squeeze it out onto the glass and let the excess just run right off of it. Once everything is coated inside and out, I can go ahead and put this aside to dry, throw a cover over it so it doesn't get any wooly boogers stuck on it, and I can go ahead and move on. Things are actually finally starting to go my way. Now, this doesn't mean there won't be more hiccups, but for now, stuff is flowing. So I'm going to turn my attention back to the body. I had an idea to break up the monotony of the flat black with gunmetal trim. Silver or chrome would have broken the entire illusion of a spy vehicle. But with this gunmetal, it was going to give some visual appeal without ruining the look that I was shooting for. So I break out my detail paint brushes and my Tamiya gunmetal paint and I start painting the trim. And I gotta be honest, not to toot my own horn, this proved to be a great decision because it really came out badass. I said at the beginning that everything had paint on it and the wheels and tires were no exception. But with the old paint stripped off the tires and wheels, I go ahead and repaint what was underneath these ugly red wheels with some nice glossy black, and I start putting things back together. Again, for variety, like I said, I used a gloss black on the wheels, and it really worked well. It kind of popped out a little bit, made a nice little detail touch.
Everything is looking great right now, so I can go ahead and head down to my drill press to round over the end of the axles. And of course, in the process, I will destroy one wheel and one tire. I bought this sled to hold the nail punches I use, but stupidly, I never read the instructions, and as such, I didn't know about the locking nut. So while I'm trying to put all this together, the sled moved, and the press slips and smashes into one of the wheels, killing the wheel and the tire. <sighs> I'm really beside myself at this point. But what can I do besides head back to my work area, pull out a spare, get it painted, and then go back down. Once there, I find the locks, I line everything, I lock it back up, and this time everything goes back together fine, and I can now move to the home stretch. But we still have one big giant kick in the gonads left. This was one of those vehicles from early where I was still forgetting to drill out the post before paint and I didn't realize it. I've been doing so much better guys, seriously. This one slipped through the cracks because I started it a long time ago. So here I am having to drill and tap the posts. I have to be honest, at this point I'm in a state of sheer terror. I drilled the posts out totally expecting to screw up the paint again, but as it is, I pull it off. I get the post drilled and didn't kill my paint job. Hooray for me. It has indeed been a long, hard road, but I can finally start putting this truck back together. I drop in the amazing glass and, of course, the black painted interior. Now I can put in the rear door and put the base back on. It's really starting to look amazing. And now I can go ahead and seal this whole thing up with two small button head screws and get a look at the final product. Well, everything is back together and it's looking amazing. Uh, despite the issues, I really ended up loving this thing and the only reason I'm sending it to Ken is because I really don't hate Ken, I love him, and I just don't want to steal this truck from him. So, Ken, here is your spy truck. I hope you and all of you watching this love this truck as much as I do. Well, there you have it, my spy truck. It was a long time in the making, but in the end, it came out great, in my humble opinion. I hope you love it, and I hope you love the video. If so, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. I hope you're all having an amazing day today. But if you do hit a snag, I hope you find the path to getting around it with a smile on your face. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.